Hi, this is Robert with Purple Shirt Realty. I wanted to get this video out. Uh, basically what it is, is what we do for our clients, whether you're a buyer who's coming from out of town or you're somebody who always already lives locally. What this is, is the walk through like a few days or up to a week before you're closing. Uh, we do this with the builder and what it does is this video is when the builder actually demonstrates your home shows you where everything's at how it works um, for somebody coming from out of town if they can't make it we do this on their behalf and we record it exactly like you see in this video to send to them about their home so they have a video record if you're in town and you come to the walkthrough we still do this with you while you're there so you have a video record of also of the walkthrough of your home and everything the builder tells you because he shares so much information when you're doing this walkthrough that it's hard to remember it all but that's one of the courtesy one of the things we do with our next level service for you guys is to video everything for you so that you have a video record of it um, so anyway let's get straight into it um, you can reach us anytime about buying a home we offer a better deal guarantee but no more pitches we're gonna get into this and let you see how a walkthrough looks hi guys uh, this is video clip number one for your new home orientation with Michaela from Strand uh, so I'm just gonna I'm gonna be behind the camera and just let her talk and it'd be just like she's talking to you guys and if there's anything that I know and think should be asked um, that would be good questions for you guys to have answered I'll ask while we do it so here we go <laughs> all right first welcome welcome to your new home I'm very excited for you guys uh, I'm gonna try to tell you as much about the home as I can not with the intention of you memorizing everything even though you have it on video um, it's just to get you familiar with the house before you just own everything so I'm gonna tell you some stuff about the kitchen first uh, this little button right here, it's a turbo button. So if you have the water on, it makes the water pressure a little faster. Uh, I'm gonna do it again. It gets aggressive when you turn it on spray mode though. That's your disposal. And then this is going to be a water filter system. After you close, somebody got hungry. Uh, this company called DePure, they're going to come in and they're going to hook this up to be a water filter system under the sink. It is free. It is good for about a year, the filter is. But they're going to give you some sales pitches, see if you're interested in other products and whatnot. You can do whatever you want, go with them. You do have filtered water in the fridge. Me personally, I want a soap pump. So just do whatever you want with that. I'll chime in on that one. So. The whole reason they do that, they provide it free, that third party company, is because they want a chance to come out here and they want, they'll give you some free filters, but then they're gonna test your, do a water test in front of you and tell you just how bad your water is, even though it's not bad, bad. Um, and you know, all the calcium and hardness and all that stuff in it. And they're gonna hard, try to hard sell you a whole home water softener and purifier. Um, they cost about twice as much as what you should pay. We have one for our home, there's benefits to having it, um, but you don't wanna go with them. You will way overpay and get way less than you need. So I would recommend if you're good at resisting sales, go ahead and get your, call them out, get your free water filters, just tell them no. And then if you want, uh, purification system or whatnot, give me a call. I'll tell you who we got. Um, the best company in the city and they're about half the price of everybody. Um, so anyway, I uh, just wanted to throw that out there so you understand it's not just simply a little water thing and you get free filters. They're going to try and sell you more stuff. <laughs> so if you can look right here, underneath your kitchen sink, ow, there's a really important sticker on the door. The top part of that sticker has a QR code that you can scan and it'll take you to the warranty website. Fastest, easiest way to put in a warranty request. And then the bottom part has emergency numbers for AC, plumbing, electric, and smart home. I would get you some clear packing tape and laminate it. And then in this drawer right next to your stove, they're gonna put all your appliance paperwork. Um, all the ones that look like this, you do need to fill out or register your appliance within 30 days after closing. So yes, you can fill it out or you can just go to whirlpool.com slash register and you'll need these numbers from each piece of paper. 
So within 30 days after you close, register appliances. Yes, that's very important. And then underneath your island, one of my favorite things about this model, because this isn't in every, um, all of them, you can switch the colors of the lights. So if you're feeling more of a warm vibe. That is cool. You can do that. I love that feature. Your microwave does vent outside and not back into the house. And then I don't want y'all to be alarmed if you end up hearing like a little watery or dripping noise in behind your washing machine because your washing machine comments liquids, whatever. Your washing machine liquids go down this black tube into this pipe. And then back in behind this black pipe, there's a little white thing on the back of that wall. I'm not sure if you can see it, but it's back there and it's leaking out your AC condensation liquid. So you might hear a little dripping noise sometimes there. It's just your AC. AC condensation. Do not panic. A lot of people put in warranty requests for that. It's normal. <laughs> there they are. I knew you were missing papers. Your countertops are really pretty. You are gonna get a care sheet on how to take care of these countertops and your closing docks. Please just use a cutting board. It's like the number one thing, just use a cutting board. And then these floors are really nice plank vinyl. They're really strong, scratch stain, dust resistant. You can leave water on them for like 24 hours. Um, dog claws are great. No bleach. If you do put bleach on these floors, it can turn them green and orange. Not the best look. Got that? No bleach. You don't want to drag heavy furniture across them. Either can tear or rip or like your bed frame. Yeah. Probably don't do that. If you got any? It's better, yeah, to lift, move, and set down, or put those little foam feet on your furniture that slides easy and won't tear anything. That's what I like to use. So that is what I have for the kitchen. This is where your doorbell sound is coming out of. And then I'm not gonna be the one to teach you about the security system because this neighborhood does it differently than any other neighborhoods I do these walks in. After you close, somebody comes and talks to you. I won't tell you anything I don't know. Sure. <laughs> oh, dang it, I'm gonna have to spite from you. So there's something I do wanna show you, but you have very, very tall ceilings in this home. Which is great. I mean, don't get me wrong. Please don't fall. Just don't mind me climbing your <laughs> counters like this. So you can pull these lights down like this. And there's a switch on the back side of it where you can change the brightness of oh, the color. Oh, that's cool. So I would recommend getting a ladder, but you can change it to whatever it's you want. softer, lighter. <laughs> yeah. That's Usually great. I stand on the tub to do that, but you have really tall ceilings. Okay. And now for a bedroom. <laughs> So you don't have a fan in here, but your ceiling is hardwired, harnessed, and braced for a fan. All of your bedrooms are. So if you do want a fan, someone just has to pop that down. Basically just put the fan up there. It's super easy. Okay, I got the switch for it. The switches are really cool. Um, you can just kind of use a butter knife or just kind of use, use the fat pads on your finger to pull this off. Go to this website right here called Diaco. Diaco, I don't really know how to say it. Now you can pull the blue tab, wiggle this part loose, and then you can replace these with Amazon switches, dimmers, Googles, Amazon Alexas, I think I already said that, but all kinds of smart switches. Basically whatever you want, this is how you unlock the smart home. There you go. That is cool. I love this. And then your windows, the blinds are no strings attached. You just lift them, you just pull them. And then the windows, you pull them both this way to unlock and then free lift. They're connected to the security. I don't know if you could hear it on the video, but when I opened the window, it went ding, ding, ding from the security panel. These two little tabs right here, can they see the tabs? Yeah. Okay, squeeze them the window towards you and then you can clean it and remove the screen. Please Very don't. important you don't let it drop. <laughs> <laughs> Just about to say don't drop the window. <laughs> and then close it a little rough. It doesn't like it when you're gentle. 
at least not when they're new. I don't spend much time with these once they're yeah, they get broken tight. in. Yeah, they're tight. Yeah. <laughs> And then you do have smoke alarms in every single bedroom. If they're not in a bedroom, they're also carbon monoxide detectors. That's good. So if I am not mistaken, there's one more thing for me to show you in the primary closet. Okay. Okay. I guess we could have chosen that as our bedroom, but I didn't know I wasn't gonna be able to reach there. That's all right. <laughs> So okay to get a little walk through the hall. So you'll see that. this one's different than the one in the bedroom. The one in the bedroom is completely white, and then this one has gray, white, and red on the front that says carbon monoxide. So you do have a fan in your living room or your primary bedrooms, and then your other ones are wired for a fan. And then you're going to get your patio fan. Yes, that's, that's supposed to be in the next couple of days, supposed to be um, put around. So again, this has to do with security stuff. I don't know nothing about that. <laughs> but this is how they're gonna hook up, you know, your cable and internet into the home, whatever companies you call. They're gonna come out here. You have something that kind of looks like this outside that they're gonna connect the outside equipment on. Wires come all the way through and then they connect whatever else they need to here. It'll stop at like your coaxes and stuff so you can tie into the internet, all that good jazz. That's pretty cool how they pre wire that. Oh, there is one more thing I can say. I'm just trying to remember anything I can possibly sure. think of to let you know. Grout is the stuff in between your tiles and the showers. Over time, this stuff nicks, it chips, it stains. I dye my hair a lot. Mine is an ungodly red purple color. <laughs> uh, I am going to send you a picture of a product called Grout Sealant, just as an example. But if you use a grout sealant about yearly, apply it, leave it, and wipe it, it'll help prevent nicks, chips, stains, mold, all kinds of stuff. You don't have to use this, but it's a great way to maintain your investment. Yeah, there's two ways people go about it. There's the grout sealant, which helps seal it, where you don't have to worry so much about it. And then there's the other people that choose to, okay, I'm not gonna seal it at all. Instead, I'm gonna use the grout cleaner and clean the grout with the grout cleaner, you know, as it gets dirty and stained. So half one way, half the other. Um, but either way, just so you know, the grout is, cause it's porous, so it tries to, you know, get dirty and you either have to prevent it or clean it after one way or the other. I'll also send you a product called Rain-X. Um, I'm going to show you a picture of yeah. your glass. Makes the water bead off of the glass. <laughs> yes, like the windshield yeah. on the car. Yeah, exactly. I'm going to send you those as examples to help you out. That is all I have to say on the inside. <laughs> the outside, there's going to be more. As you can see, there's little dirty spots and nicks and stuff like that. After she's finished going over the home, I'm going to come back through and all the little spots that need touch-ups and all that, I'm going to blue tape it. And then just do a little walk through so you can see all the areas of blue tape. Um, that way I don't film every single little piece of tape we're putting on the house as we walk through it. And I'll also take some pictures to send y'all. I don't know if they can figure that, but you'll get pictures from me. Yeah. Sorry, I can't resist. Pictures, video. Yeah. <laughs> Good, how are you? Working on the phone. Okay. You want to go do the outside part? Yeah. Cool. Get all of the boring yeah. stuff out. I'll follow, of you. I'll follow you. Yes, absolutely. So, best way to do outside, we'll start at the front part that doesn't have a gate. Okay. And then we can just do one giant circle and pass everything as we go around. Gotcha. Are you also going to do uh, like up in the attic, uh, like where the port of bleach and all of that stuff? Okay. One place I can't take you is attic since I am third party. Gotcha. If you get hurt, I get sued. So gotcha. anything. Actively, we'll have him do that on the final walk. Yeah. Exactly. He either takes you up there. He has a video. He has a plan for whatever he does. Um, I believe we should start on that side, but I could be wrong. Okay. Hey, I wasn't. Okay. Ready? Yep. All right, so does this look familiar? This is the <laughs> longest one I've ever seen, and this is hilarious. Yeah, it um, can be cut. Yeah. They're probably going to cut it to like here. 
<laughs> uh, but again, this is how they can thread through all the cable, internet, wires, all that good stuff. So whenever you call those companies. That's all that stuff that we just it. showed you in your master closet. <laughs> this is a gas meter. Uh, good news is this is a digital gas meter. If there's ever a leak or some kind of emergency, most likely gas company's gonna know before you do and turn this off. But just in case, if you smell gas in your garage, you smell gas in your kitchen or something, you can come here with a pair of pliers and move this until the holes line up. From here to here. Just 90 degree turn yep. with a wrench. Holes line up, it's off. I'm a paranoid person, so you know it never hurts to know how to do that. <laughs> That's right. This does not need to be insulated come winter time. This is simply connecting the sprinkler wires to outside. Cool. And then this is water. Looks like somebody's already been running it, so yeah, we're gonna turn that off. <laughs> this is a plumbing clean out. If the plumber has to come do some kind of work, like undo clogs or something like that, he can stick his snake hook down in here. Or if there was a sewage backup, it'll push this up and come out here instead of going back into your house. So that's good. You can put a light there. It's wired for a light. And there's another one on that side. Oh, you can get two. Huh? Yeah, one on each side. There. <laughs> and then we are going to circle the garage, but there's some good equipment in here. Mm -hmm. So this is your sprinkler system. Builder is going to give you a better rundown of this next meeting, but I'm going to give you a quick little run through. So most of the time it's just going to sit here on run doing whatever you have it scheduled to do. You can go to date and time to adjust, go up and down to adjust, and over to go to the next thing. So up or down on the hour, go to the minutes, up or down on the minutes, yeah. It's running every day at five. You can go up or down to adjust that. Section A1 is running for five minutes. And if it's not labeled yet, they're gonna label it before you close. PCS will come through and put a little sticker right here. And that'll be your different zones. Yeah. A1 is your first zone. So zone one is running for five minutes, up or down to adjust that, you know, less in winter, more in summer. A2, six minutes, so on and so forth. And you have Six. Five. Five or six. Sometimes they put an yeah, extra one and have it for zero, zero minutes. Zero, yeah. so maybe five. Five is pretty common too. Watering days, they got it three days a week because it's new sod, but it's also winter time. I don't know anything about these and I'm not going to tell you anything I don't know. And then if you want to run it when it's not time for them to run, you can go to manual and then go to run. And see, it's coming off. <laughs> That's how you figure out exactly where each zone waters so to. You just one. go through a temporary run like that to see. So one's flower bed, two is your front yard. Good uh, Three's probably gonna be this side right here a bit. Oh, it sounds like it's going on the side side. It sounds like it's that side, I Might be the back. Oh, yeah, it's a side. You oh, you see it? it? Yeah. Oh, yeah. So it's it's just this side. Not the full backyard, just the side. Right. So then four should be the back and five should be this one, but we're still going to look. Yeah, four is your backyard. Yeah, they have it running long, for minutes. <laughs> yeah. You can tell the sides are always short amount of time. Yeah. This will be five. And that goes in. You know which zones they are. And that way you can adjust the times now that you know what zones they are. If you find one needs more water, one needs less water, you can just tweak the times and how many days you water. Yeah, yeah. water it more in summer. <laughs> yeah, the hotter it gets outside, the more often you probably want to water it, the longer times. The space going around the bottom of the garage is an important thing. This is basically a giant moisture release hole. There's no insulation in the garage except for half of this wall and this wall because it is touching the house. If it didn't have space to breathe, it would end up collecting moisture beads back there leading to mold. So you're more than welcome to cover the space down here, but you can't fill it. And then from your view, the space might look like it's this big. There's 
there's a piece of wood in between there, so the space is actually like really, really tiny. It just gives an illusion because you don't want concrete touching sheetrock, then it'll suck the moisture out. This is completely normal. It is normal. Breaker box, I'm sure you've probably seen one of these before. Same thing with the clear packing tape. I would laminate everything. Yeah, I can take a good picture here mm -hmm. because over time this writing will start to disappear and fade. Not my, it will. Yeah. <laughs> I've been there. <laughs> Not as fast as if the breaker box was on the outside wall of the house, which uh, that's what mine was some that far. I hated that. Mm. If something trips, you go off and on to reset it. You are under two years warranty for all of the two year warranty for all electric. However, let's say you call a electrician and it's just a trip breaker, he is gonna charge you for his time going out there. So just always check the breaker box first. Um, water heater, you have one of the best water heaters ever. I freaking love these things. This water heater makes about 240 gallons of hot water in a day. Thank you for your input. You are basically never running out of hot water. If you do, you need to calm down because that is a lot of water. Uh, it has a two year automatic warranty. You're gonna get information reminding you to extend that warranty with the company. And this thing has a lifespan of 20 to 30 years with proper care. Proper care is once a year consistently calling a licensed plumber out here to take care of it, flush it, descale it, and all that good jazz. And if you end up buying a water softener, it'll that would help. help because it'll remove all the hardness so you won't have the scaling at all. You get 10 extra bricks. Woohoo! <laughs> I would keep them just in case. Well, one's a half a brick, so nine and a half. Nine and a half bricks. <laughs> Honestly, lately I haven't seen any leftover bricks. Yeah. So I'll take it. You do get two remotes with your garage door, and then there is an app right here that you can download to open it with your phone. And then let's say you order something on Amazon, like super expensive, and you're not going to be home. You, there's a thing where you can give them a code to one time drop it off in your garage. So I don't know if I've ever used it. You can it, actually like open it up remotely from your phone also, it's and then cool. close it back after. Yeah. I don't know if I'm going to let people in my garage, but yeah. it's cool. Most people just ask their neighbor to grab it. Yeah. <laughs> so, and then, it's nice to know you got that, though. I have nothing to say about this blank wall. Yes. Your There's driveway. There. Can oh, and then of course you got your little sensors to, uh, to keep the garage door from closing on any kids or anything. It's uh, if anything like is in is blocking that sensor when the garage door tries to close, it won't. So if you ever press in the button and it won't close, maybe something's in the way of the sensors. So. Yeah, and if you're closing the door and running under, you got to jump. Yeah, you gotta step over the sensor or it'll go back I've up. I've done it so many times. You'll see me do it later, probably. It's almost like a game. <laughs> Your driveway can hold about <coughs> 30,000 pounds. That's a lot. Uh, that's like 10 cars. It's a long driveway. Too. I don't, you know, yeah, it's a long driveway, but you still don't have space for 10 cars. <laughs> yeah. Maybe six. Uh, the reason I'm telling you this is your moving truck. If your moving truck is bigger than 15 feet, I do recommend parking it on the street because at that weight, it can start to damage things. Yeah, it can crack it. Crack it, move it, shift it, all kinds of things. So if you do hire a mover, instead of ha instead of them backing onto your driveway to unload, have them park like where you see my truck is down there, unload to the street and carry it from there. They're not gonna be happy about that, but it'll stop them from cracking your driveway. If you do break the driveway in such a manner after closing, DR Horton will not fix it. So, I mean, I would just park it on the street. I don't care if they get mad. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's what they're being, being paid for, that's to a carry big, it. That's like a third of the reason the blocks are there. They also want to give you a shiny new driveway yeah. without oil spots and stuff. But. Yeah, that is why they put the barricades like that. They don't want people. The heavy trucks will come up here and they do crack yeah. sometimes. People they come like, like they might come to deliver an appliance or something like that and they'll back all the way up if uh. they can. Um, and they've got, you know, they've got a truck full of appliances. Right. Just one. <laughs> Very heavy trucks. <laughs> um, your tree right here. This is a little baby Oakley. Take care of him. He's a good tree. And he's alive. So I know he looks a little skinny. Give him time. But the green inside is a good sign. Yeah. Give him lots of water. He has hooked up to the sprinkler system. He's a good guy. HOA does require a tree. I'm just trying to make it more lighthearted for you. Your tree parents 
Oh my god, that sun is killing me. I the wish little, I had those transition screens. The little hole slots where you see the grout cut out in the bottom of your stone. It's supposed to be like that. Wheat holes to keep moisture from building up between the frame of the home and the and the stone and the brick. You'll see the same thing above your windows. I'm so sorry. I thought I answered that. They'll be cut out there. You talked about the garage inside the garage part. You're right. But people always ask, well, why is no, it's my important. grout is down? It's Very yours. important. They forgot to fill the hole. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for catching me, man. But it, it'll be like that anywhere there's stone or brick at the bottom of where that stone or brick is, it'll be cut out like that so moisture can escape. Your brick is beautiful, by the way. It is. I love it. It's a beautiful combination. I like the wavy pattern. Kind of like the... Yeah. Yeah. I don't know if they can see it. <laughs> So this, okay, now I can finally see because the sun isn't blinding me. This is a sprinkler backflow unit. The builder is gonna teach you how to use this to drain the sprinklers for winter time. Um, he is also gonna give you a video of such on a flash drive so that you won't forget when it actually comes next winter time because we're very far from a freeze right now. I'm sweating. Yeah, <laughs> should be done until next year now. I have to wear collared shirts to these meetings, but my sweat wicking really? shirt is in my car. <laughs> It will be look presentable. Oh, I hate when they do these, like they water the lawn right before. Mm -hmm. So we're coming down. Oh, oh, we yeah, got something important, sorry. Oh. Uh, this right oh, yeah, here, this little tube drain. above this window, it's your overflow valve. So if this ever drips, call the AC guy. There might be a clog or a leak somewhere in your system and you don't want that to continue until you have water damage in your attic. There's a pan up in your attic that would first start to fill with water. It's connected to this tube. But if for any reason that pan, like if it's dripping here and you're not paying attention. Your ceiling can And then eventually that pan gets clogged up some kind of way where it can't drip out of here, then it'll start backing up in, into your attic. My roommate did not tell me the tube was dripping. <laughs> And our ceiling dripped. <laughs> oh, yeah. Don't like that happening. Learn, learn from everybody else's mistakes. Yeah, they did water. It's pretty good for you. Yeah. The good news is they'll have nice, healthy sod. Yep. The, all the green parts coming through is a very good sign. Dang, these are actually, there's a lot of better things. Just the green ones. Oh yeah. Well, it's springtime, so it should it's really coming. start coming in. Yeah. I'm excited. I love that big covered patio. So yeah. your fences, they're all flip flopped. Some of them are flat and some of them have three slats going across. You own the flats. Your neighbor owns the slats. If this one breaks, you need to fix it. If this one breaks, they should fix it. This isn't like a hard, fast rule. There's nobody actually managing this. It is just to be courteous to your neighbor. So please do your part. <laughs> yeah, and then also they don't want somebody to say, well, how come I get the backside of the fence for my whole yard and the other person, well, I, you know. Yeah, it's fair. Woohoo! I get the whole front side. <laughs> Besides, when you really think about it, if one of these pickets right here is damaged or starts to come off, you can't get on the other side to hammer a new one on anyway, right? You would have to climb over into there. So that what makes them responsible for these. Whereas you see this is where these get hammered. If, if it gets damaged or something like that, you know, lawn service or whatever breaks them or whatever happens and needs to be replaced and y'all do these. When it comes a while from now, when the two by fours and the four by fours start rotting and you know it gets old, well then y'all talk about it's a combined expense where y'all work together to pay for a new fence to be put up. The shape of your yard. It might be kind of hard to see on the video. Um, I'm just gonna text you like a collection of pictures that I would typically text to people doing these walks. Can, that's what's cool to have the little view from. Yeah, do your thing. So, the water will drain from your back fence forward and from your house out to the yard. If you look real close, right where she's standing, 
it'd be like a curve almost i call it like a three-point line in basketball it'll curve around your home all the water is designed to go from the fence to there from your home to there and then it channels it to the side of the home and then down the side to the street that's how the the yard drains so everything goes to that little it's called a swale and then drains it down the sides of your home to the street so uh, I'm, I'm gonna text you pictures that I would typically text people doing these walks on me. It's those products I was talking about. And then I actually have a diagram that our company uses to show the pattern of the yard. It's just really helpful. So I'm just gonna send it just so you have that visual of kind of where the water drains. It just, it helps me a lot. <laughs> if at any time after you move in, we get a hard, heavy rain and a day and a half, two days later, there's still standing water, meaning you, you can see it's not draining away from the home or there's low spots where it's pooling and stuff like that. Call them out, that's warrantable. You know, they'll fix that to get it to drain correctly. You should never have standing water. Now, if it rains real hard and all that, it takes time for it to drain. So if it's standing for the first 24 hours, give it, give it a little bit of time. They're gonna tell you that, but if it's, if you see it drained everywhere else, but it's still a puddle somewhere, yeah. well, then that's kind of what we're looking for. It's a full for. year warranty, so please take advantage. Yes. Yes. I do like the size of the patio. You do have a hookup, so you can put in a little uh, propane tank or gas grill. Or do an outdoor kitchen. Yeah. Yeah, all that right there. And then there's a few more important things down on this side. Okay. I like the way you explain things. I've been doing it a while. <laughs> so right here in your home, uh, not just right here, you've probably got like 12, mm -hmm. 12 or so of these. These are called expansion joints. They've stopped interlocking the bricks and instead just filled them up with caulking. Your house is gonna settle into place. It's a brand new home. Brick does not bend. So this allows this to crack and break or whatever and keeps your bricks intact. So as a homeowner, you just need to come out here about once a year and fill up any gaps or cracks or anything in the caulking and you're good to go. So basically like we all learn in science, right? When things are hot, they expand. When they're cold, they contract. Well, the whole home's gonna do that as it goes through the different seasons, especially the, the biggest things you'll notice is in the first year. And I'll get into that when we go back inside the hairline cracks, you'll get in the home. But, um, but this is what that that's for. So the whole home will expand and contract at these joints instead of cracking your brick. If you do see cracking your brick, that's that'll be a foundational issue. But if it's bigger than the side of the corner. Yeah. Well, no. Well, if it's the brick, it's going to be. But but that I've never seen that happen except for foundations that are at least 15 years old. Um, minimum so that should not be a problem but yeah long yeah many 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 years and usually that's the older neighborhoods and the old type foundations but but this is what keeps your brick from cracking lets your home breathe and expand and uh, this is really pretty brick I really like it yeah it's a good color brick and with that stone combination it really looks good couple down here down is here. a bit yeah. couple more important things down here yeah. So this is AC shutoff switch. AC guy needs to come do some work. He can turn it off. That's so that they can shut power to the AC without disturbing the power to the rest of the home. You can put a padlock here. You are behind a fence, so it is optional. However, there is copper in here. People do love copper. So there you go. Yeah. This is the exhaust for your water heater. It runs off of gas and electric. That makes CO2. And this is the drain tube for your water heater. When you're getting it serviced once a year, this is where the water's gonna drain out of. No pets or kids or anything right here at that time. This would be hot water. Very hot water. AC unit has a two year automatic warranty and you are gonna get information on how to extend that warranty by four to eight years through the manufacturer. Please take advantage of that. You have your energy meter. That's how they decide how much you owe for bills every month. And then right there, you have your emergency disconnect. If you ever had some kind of electrical emergency in your home, you can come over here and turn off all of the power in your house. So, turns off everything. Sparks are flying. You already turned off the breakers, but there's still sparks. Turn off everything. <laughs> and then right down here, you have this ground rod. This is 
basically protecting your home from lightning strikes or giant energy surges by shooting that energy about 12 feet into the ground. So just don't break it. I would maybe get some of your neighbor's flower rocks or something, or flower, yeah, the flower bed rocks, just kind of. Or put your little bricks, ex, extra bricks yes. around it or something. But you see, that's one of the things they mentioned on the inspection report. It was about how it was under the ground and not exposed like it's supposed to. So they still got to take care of that a little as well. Bit. Oh. And the last thing here, rain sensor. If it detects rain, it'll cut off your sprinklers, saving you water, money, oversaturation. Now here's my input about the rain sensor, because I'm not a big fan of the rain sensor. Really? Tell me. So the rain sensor, and I see a lot of people waste a lot of water. The rain sensor will only know if it's actively raining. So for example, if you got your sprinkler system set and it's supposed to turn on, it's say like uh, three in the afternoon, but it just rained all morning long and stopped and your yard's already soaked. And then the sun comes out at noon and then three o'clock comes around while well, the rain sensor sees the sun out. It's gonna turn on all your sprinklers to water again anyway. Yeah, as soon as this part's dry, it's not gonna turn off your sprinkler. Okay. So I've seen, I've, I've had people before where they calling up, my sprinkler system's not working, it's not turning on, or they say, you know, that um, it's turning on all the time and all that. Almost all the time, it's a problem with the rain sensor. They're okay. <laughs> so it's, you just got to keep that in mind. The first thing you want to check if you got any issue with your sprinkler system is, is the rain sensor functioning correctly? Because that's most likely the culprit. So... I'm out of things to say. <laughs> okay. Um, real quick. I, I do want to touch real, we'll go, when we go back in here yeah. in a second, touch on uh, the settling cracks. Yeah, absolutely. And, and that warranty. Um, absolutely. Oh. Um, let me one run around. I'm going to unlock the door. <laughs> oh, okay. So I don't have to walk back through the mud? No, you're going <laughs> to. Awesome. Thank you. Okay. So I'm going to unlock this door. It's a beautiful backyard. Good size. So we're going to show you what a settling crack is. I'm going to look for one. I'm going to look for one inside the home when we go back in. Basically, and it's the only builder that does this. So going back to your home, expanding and contracting during your first year, right? As it expands and contracts, you have those expansion joints we showed you in your brick that'll keep your brick from cracking. Well, there's no such expansion joint on the inside of your home like that. So as your home expands and contracts, What'll happen is little cracks will form in different parts of your home. Generally speaking, the most settling cracks are going to happen like right in the joints here, you know, there. There's one here. Oh, you got one right there. Okay. Let me see if I can get it. Oh, no. Okay, so straight up top there, there's a little crack already running, but that would be like a settling crack. Um, your first year, you're going to have a whole lot of those because it's going to be the first time the home will be expanding and contracting since it was built. It'll experience all four seasons for the first time. So when it's, so what they do is they allow you one courtesy trip that you can call out. So we recommend that you wait till the 11th month to give as many of those as much time as possible to form and they'll come out when you call them and take care of all of them for you at one time, um, which is really cool. Nobody else really does that. Um, so I recommend wait until the 11th month, give them a call. Another thing that's really cool, because they're, they're, they're really cool about this too. If when you're moving in, you brush up against the wall or you, you kind of bump something or nick something and uh, that needs touch up, when they come to do those settling cracks, you can just kind of point at it and say, hey, you know, can you hit this little area with the paint for me? Can you just hit this little bit? Because when they do the settling cracks, they're gonna come and they're gonna uh, just like fill in the crack with like a little bit of putty on their finger and then just brush paint right over it, right? So they'll have the paint with them. Um, and then you'll just, you could just say, hey, can you hit this little spot for me? Um, you can see there's a lot of places we're fixing the blue tape now that need touch-ups. And we're going to walk through the whole home and do that now. And, uh, and then I'll turn it on and get a second quick video after we've done that. And, uh, and that should wrap it up till the final walk. The, the 
Builder has the inspection report. I spoke to him earlier and they're on top of all those items to get those corrected as well and they'll show us that those have been addressed when we meet with them on the final one. So that's it for now. Thanks guys. Congrats. Thank you, Michaela. <laughs> all right guys, so y'all can see we just finished the blue tape. These are all the little areas throughout the home. They need little touch-ups and little things. Didn't see anything major. It's just a little blue tape items where they need to do touch-ups. So anyway, I'm just gonna make a quick pass so you can see. And then we're gonna go over a few little warranties, warranty pieces of information. I'm out, same, a lot more, same less, but it's kind of a typical amount of touch-ups. Nothing anywhere to be alarmed about. Everything that it would be of any concern is being taken care of from the inspection report. Anyway. So I'm going to send you an info packet with all these pictures and notes I've been taking represented by those little bubbles you see. Uh, this is not a closing document, it's nothing legal or closing, none of that. It's something I'm going to email to you so that you have it now rather than the day before you close. So the six pages of info are warranty, drainage, the tree in the front yard, non-warranted items, a disclaimer page, and then more warranty stuff. So first page is warranties. This is gonna have a super awesome website link here for you. If you go here, it's gonna give you basically everything about warranties you could possibly wanna know. How to put in a warranty request, a homeowner manual on how to own a home, all kinds of really, really helpful material. If you don't look at anything else on this info packet I send you, look at this. <laughs> now with that, they do wanna make sure, you understand you should look at the warranty book before you put in warranty claims. You understand that online is the best way to put in a claim, and you understand if you make an appointment, you should let somebody in the home to do that job. Please don't call them and then leave them outside. It's a big problem, apparently. <laughs> the second page is your drainage. Their general rule of thumb is going to be 48 to 72 hours, but depending on the severity of the standing water, if you have standing water after a rain event, but no warranty request, it should all drain away within 48 to 72 hours completely. Oh. Sorry, my computer doesn't like me, so you might get some random marks. This one is about trees. This one's really funny. Uh, DR Horton loves trees. It's gonna give you this little thing on what can kill a tree. They had to remove trees to put a house here, to put a yard there. Too much sun can kill a tree, not enough water can kill a tree. This is a terrible watering schedule that tells you to water your yard for 80 minutes in one day. Please don't do that. Sorry? <laughs> no, not you. <laughs> Please don't do oh. that. Don't, don't water your yards for 80 oh, yeah. minutes a day. Water. Yeah. Just don't kill your tree. That's it. Only part that matters on that whole page. Now this one's pretty handy, although this is spelled wrong. Your comment on wearable items. Um, Jesus. Okay, well you don't have enough stairs, so. 
forget you. If you mess up something in the house, such as the paint, you dig a hole in the yard, something like that, you as the homeowner damaged it, therefore DR Horton can't fix it. It is also gonna tell you some things like porches, or excuse me, concrete cracks. Nobody can control that. However, if you have a concrete crack that starts to move, displace, or you can fit the side of a quarter into it, you should put in a warranty request to get that checked out. Skinny, skinny, tiny cracks though are gonna happen in concrete. Same thing with bricks. You might get teeny, teeny, tiny brick cracks, but if you can fit a quarter into there, you need to put in a warranty request. The courtesy he was talking about earlier, 11 months after you close, you're gonna put in a warranty request and get all your settlement cracks filled. I'm gonna send you a picture of grout sealant like I was telling you in the bathroom earlier. These spots on your countertop are all gonna look a little different. If you damage the floor on move-in, they cannot do anything. And then if you put something in the toilet that you shouldn't, they, they, you, they can't help you. And then the last one is about upstairs, but you don't have an upstairs. This is disclaimer info. So bricks, they're not identical. Tiles, they're not identical. Oh my God, what is happening? Seal your grout, we talked about that. Your countertop, it's gonna look different in spots. And you are gonna get a care sheet on how to take care of this. It's a really good care sheet. I recommend you take a look at it. Vacuum your carpet so they'll be dirty. This is the silly page. This is, just go with it. Use the same color of paint or it'll be a different color. They're gonna give you the exact color and a coupon to get a free gown. They can't control the wood grain inside of cabinets. No bleach on the floors and then just don't drag anything sharp or heavy across them like a metal bed frame that could scratch something. Your carpet might shed don't be alarmed. And then last but not least, they want to make sure you know today and it's not a surprise at closing or next walk, they don't warranty fences or driveways. That is why they flip-flopped all the fences to make it better for everybody. And then your driveway can hold about 30,000 pounds. So just park the moving truck on the street and you'll be in the clear. All set? <laughs> all good, all good. Okay. And I'm initial off on all these guys for y'all, basically saying that Y'all watch this video and you heard what she said, but she's gonna email all this to you as well. Anyway, so, okay, that's it. Thank you for watching this walkthrough video. I hope it was educational for you and you got a lot of value from it. Again, we offer a better deal guarantee, top notch service that you can't get anywhere else. We are a premier number one in the Houston area to cover you and your home purchase, whether you're coming from out of town or here already, or and especially if you're a first time home buyer to make sure you are taken care of on an expert level that nobody else offers. Um, so anyway, reach out to us. Uh, our information's down below. We'd love to hear from you and we hope you have a blessed day.